Hi, I'm Sarah Borders with Benefits Compliance Solutions. Since we're getting to the end of the year and since most plans renew January 1st, it's time to look at the determination to know whether or not a plan has to file Form 5500. Typically, we talk a lot about the 5500 when it's due, generally in July, but we don't look at how the determination is actually made. So we have to look at how many participants are on the plan as of the first day of the plan year. And so again, since most plans are calendar year plans, you'll want to take note of how many participants are on the plan the first day, not the second day, not the day before of the plan year. So participants for this purpose means employees that are enrolled on the plan, not their dependents, but also don't forget about COBRA participants, retirees, or possibly people on FMLA. They count as participants. So you'll want to take a tally of all the participants on any of your component benefit plans if you have a wrap document in place. Typically, you'll want to look at the employer paid life insurance because everybody gets the life insurance whether they want to take it or not. And so if there are 100 or more participants on the plan as of January 1st, if you're a calendar year plan, then you will have to file Form 5500 seven months plus any extension following the end of that same plan year. So for example, if we're looking at January 1st, 2022, I have 101 participants on my life insurance plan that is wrapped with all my other benefits. I will have to file Form 5500 by July 31st of 2023 because that's seven months following the end of the plan year and of course there are extensions available. So make sure that you take a look at that number at this time to know whether or not you have to file Form 5500 in the future. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week.